The Clorfort Coalition has been prioritizing restoration on Lolo Creek for quite a while now because it's such a major tributary of the Bitterroot River. It's actually the third biggest tributary after the West and East Fork. It's an area that has long been a stronghold for native fish, particularly bull trout and West Slope cutthroat. But now in modern times, uh, the creek has been severely impacted by logging, um, agriculture, just people moving into the area. And that fishery has dwindled quite a bit and we're working to bring it back. My name is Jed Whiteley. I'm a project manager with the Clark Fork Coalition out of Missoula, Montana. Well, the reason that we installed the Lolo screen is because that fish are entrained in the thousands, in this case, tens of thousands, um, in irrigation ditches all around the Clark Fork Basin and the West. Now with the screen in place, literally not one fish will suffer that fate. There'll be zero mortality. The way an irrigation diversion works is that water leaves the creek, goes through a head gate, down a canal, and at that point it intersects the fish screen where the water goes over what looks like metal roofing but made from a steel colander. The water falls through it, the fish go down the screen, fall into a trough and return by a pipe quickly to the river. And the water basically clean a fish, goes on down the ditch. So the fish stay in the river and the water goes to the fields. It's definitely your win-win-win. If the fish are winning, the fishermen are winning, the irrigators are winning. This is a great project. It's working really well to date that we can use as a showpiece. This, this really is something that can be easily replicated and can have the same impact it's having here on tributaries throughout the Clark Fork Basin. My name is Nels Larson. I'm the manager on the McClay Ranch and the Lolo Ditch, which is uh, 1,410 miners inches, if I remember right, with a priority of April 1886. And it's still operational, still irrigating the lands of the original five ranches that's been divided into a myriad of users. There's still three large ranches that it waters and thousands of acres and hundreds of people. This irrigation ditch is the lifeblood of these ranches. Without that water, these ranches don't work. Making that water flow is, yeah, is literally make or break for these operations running livestock. So fish screens cost a ton of money. And if a nonprofit such as Clark Fork wants to come along and install it and maintain it, like, sign me up. And so I signed up and we got this big, beautiful fish screen and it's had zero impact on our right. It's had zero impact on our, on our quantity of use. Uh, and so far I have only good things to say. I, I guess it takes me a little longer to measure my water when I change my head gate. It's a, a, a minimum of maintenance with a maximum of usability. And just that we can set it and forget it. I mean, we're really lucky to live in a place like this because we have wild trout fisheries, we have lots of public land, we have uh, wild streams that have not been dammed up, free flowing, um, and just basically high natural resource values that a lot of other people in other parts of the country may take for granted. I think, I think for projects like this to get done in the future, it's really gonna take a collaboration of public funding combined with private donors and people who are willing to make a commitment um, to protect and enhance these public resources. This screen is a major step in our Bring Back the Bitterroot campaign. It was our number one priority project 
We really hope to build on this screen, use it as an example for other irrigators to come and see that this is possible, that it works really well. You know, this is, it's really about building the trust that we can do this and they can still get their water. I think there's the possibility to use this screen design all over the Bitterroot.